Hey guys, Henning and Morten from Flip Normals here. In this video, we're just going to quickly cover the basics of UV mapping ahead in Maya. For this, we assume that you're not really familiar with the concept of UV mapping and the tools. So it's going to be relatively basic. So first, we just quickly just want to talk about what a UV map is. This is something that I struggled with personally for quite some time. Just like it seemed like it seemed like a very technical thing and I didn't really understand the basics of it. So a UV mapping is essentially the basis for your model when you when you start to texture it. Without a UV map, you can't really texture at all. So in ZBrush, we can just quickly show you what a UV map is here. So this model here has been mapped out. And if we go under Tool, UV Map, and UV, more UVs, it's going to look awesome. <laughs> this is just to give you a basic representation of what it is. You don't need to worry about any of the ZBrush no. stuff, really. It looks fancy, but essentially what you can see here is we have a 3D model, and now we have a 2D representation of this. This is like um, like animal pelts. Like if an animal has been skinned, that is essentially a 2D representation of what the <laughs> animal looked like when it was, you know, an animal. <laughs> Before it was not an animal. So this just looks awesome, but this is so that once you have a 2D representation of this, in, in something like Photoshop or like any other 3D, 3D painting software, you can now just start painting on this. Like if you want color on the ear, you could essentially paint color in the ear and in these various areas. This is just so that your 3D software has a 2D representation of what your model actually looks like. So how do we actually do this? We, uh, we're using my 2018 here and um, you bring up the UV window by going to UV and you go to UV editor right here. So by default, not, you're not really going to see anything in the editor because you don't really have UVs. So the very first thing we have to do is we have to just get something in here. The way I've done this is I've gone to um, just selected the model and then I'm going to UV and then use a simple planar map. You can also just select the polys in here, shift right mouse button, go to mapping and just select planar map, automatic map and whatnot. This doesn't matter at all. The only thing we care about here is so that we get something in here. It's kind of like throwing paint at a canvas. We also have to enable a checker, a UV checker. You can do this by hitting this button here. I don't personally like this. I think this is a very confusing checker. Like I, I actually feel a bit nauseous just by looking at this. This is same like the like if something is transparent in Photoshop, I actually can't look at that. So uh, I usually get a better checker from this. You can do this just simply by Googling UV checker and there are tons of really cool ones. So the ones we're going to be using is, um, let me show you real quick. Let's go into our shader and we've already set one up here. So you just go into your file node and select your checker. So this is one I really, I really prefer to use. So select that and then just go to uh, the texture view here. So now you can see it in the viewport. And you also have to tile this across a few times here. So you do this again to the file node, place 2D texture node. And here you can set the repeat. So you can set this to, by default, this is set to one, which means it's gonna repeat once. It's gonna tile once across. By setting it to seven, it's gonna repeat seven times. So we can set this to something like three and it's gonna, it's gonna have a different scale here. Like I can wholeheartedly recommend a color color checker just because it makes it a lot more easy, not just on your eyes, but also checking for distortions yeah. and, and warping in, in your map. So. It really does. So going back to, to the very basic stuff here, if you were to paint a texture map on this, so <laughs> this here would be the map you would export. You would export out the square from, uh, from, the, from the editor here, and you would paint this in Photoshop. You could only paint on the side here. You can paint a pretty cool texture right here, but you would not be able to paint anything on, uh, it, like around the nostrils or inside here. Yeah, the checker gives a perfect representation of what would happen to your texture. As soon as you approach anything that's sort of in the center, yeah. you would have crazy distortion. Even yeah. with something like Mari, you would you don't have access to that information in your no. UV map. No. So, so we have to do a proper unfolding of this because currently we've just been throwing it in here and um, we, we have to actually cut the model up. The way I like to think about this is uh, this is more maybe for the body, but it's like if where are your seams for for your clothing? That's a bit hard for the head. Oh, you're going to say clothing. I thought you were going to seams for 
something else. <laughs> <laughs> it's like if, if it was a Frankenstein, Frankenstein's monster or something, and you had seams, you had to you had to split this up into into something two D. Where would the seams be? So for clothing, that's very for a body, that's very easy in the way that you just look at your clothing. The clothing is already even mapped because that's how they start out. They start off flat, and now they're in three D. If you think about something like uh, gloves, for example, mm. it's a little more complex thing. But you look at how gloves are actually sewn together. You have like the sausages for the fingers, yeah. different for the palm. So you can think of it like that. Heads are obviously a little different. Yeah, that's a bit macabre, but... <laughs> <laughs> so we're just going to cover some basic tools here. So the way we select stuff here, let's just quickly take away the, um, the checker, is we, we start cutting stuff off by selecting the edges. So if we want to cut off the neck here, let's say we want this to be a separate thing, you can just double click here, select the edge, and you can go under Shift, right mouse button, and hit Cut. This hotkey is also Shift X, which is quite handy. This is this hotkey is new in Mayan 2018. So you can just do cut. And now you can see that this here has been cut off here. If you click this button here, you can see the um, you can see the texture borders. This is really quite useful because now you can clearly see where the seams are. Like in the viewport here, you can clearly tell that the seams are are active. Mm -hmm. So if you now were to move these around, you can just uh, double click on this in polygon mode and just move them out. You can also uh, go into UV. You see here in your right mouse button, you have UV shell, vertex, face. If you go to UV shell, this is going to select the entire thing here. Really useful stuff. Yeah, it's pretty handy. And now you can just move this around. So if you want to sew this together again, you can select the seams here. You select all the seams, all of these guys here. And then we can go to sew. And I was just going to stitch them back. So together. important thing to note here is that it, it only the, the sewing tool is only concerned about the edges, yes. like the borders. It doesn't matter. Like you see Henning doing here, selecting parts of the inside of the mouth and stuff. That doesn't matter because no. there are no borders in there. Exactly. You can also do stitch together and that's going to move and sew them together. So I think the way that it works, it looks at the biggest mass and then moves the the, the other one closer to that mass, yeah. mass and then sews it together. So you don't get the distortion. Yeah. So let's just do that. For, the, for this example here, we're just going to have one piece here. And I'm just going to show you real quick now how to, where I will put the seams here. So first thing I'm going to do is enable symmetry because this is a perfectly symmetrical head. So if you hold down the W key, you get... Um, you get um, options here for the move tool. So go to symmetry, and then you just enable symmetry on the top here. And here you can see this, it's supposed to be an X axis. So now we have symmetry enabled. So a good a, a thing I think to note here, especially with, with a head, is that there are many wrong ways to UV map a head, yeah. but there are also a lot of correct ways. Yeah. There isn't just one way. There isn't no. one way to the, these, here, here are how our cuts should be. Because yeah. in reality, in production, you would end up with a lot of different UV sets. Maybe you'll have a set bespoke for rigging, one for effects, one for, for, for texturing. Yeah. And all of these require different things from the mesh. So there are many ways to skin a head, I guess. I guess, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... Uh, the way I like to do this is I like to I like to minimize the amount of seams in important areas. So if you're going to texture the head here, you generally want to have as few cuts as possible in this region here, just because that just makes it a lot easier in texturing. At least in traditional texturing, if you were to simply do this in something like Photoshop, mm. if you if you paint in something like Mari. Where you place your seams is of less importance. Yeah, the reality is when you have a 3D painting software, it could even be like. Oh, what was it called? Like, like three D body paint. Yeah, body remember? paint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like it, the the reality is, it it doesn't matter as much anymore. No. It's there are good practices, of course, yeah. and some things like you won't want to split things like across the cheekbones because it just no. makes it confusing for the texture artist. Yeah. So we're just gonna select one from all the way back here and all the way to the center. This is um, this is the way I've been doing this for years. So just here and just across the forehead. And now we can just hit the Shift X key for cut. And now you can see that this has been cut in the viewport. Yeah, and if you want to select these kind of edges, you just don't select the edge, hold down Shift, double click on the other edge you want to select yes. to, and then just select the entire range up until that point. So what Morton is saying now, if you want to select the range here, Shift, uh, I click this one, hold on the Shift key, and then just double click it. This is amazing. When my when mine didn't have this, it was incredibly hard to actually do anything. <laughs> 
So select a few cuts, uh, sorry, select a few cuts um, again here, from here to here. Uh, in, in the UV editor, again, hit Shift X, just to make sure this is all cut. Uh, we have like a mouth bag here. A mouth bag. <laughs> a mouth bag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mouth bags. So select this on the inside here, so that it's just maybe it's a bit, it's a bit further in here, so the lips here. So we don't really have any in the nasty seams on the lips. So I uh, hit the Shift X key again, and I mean that's that's almost it for a, for a basic basic map. This is not going to be the best map in the world. This is just very quick example. We will have way more advanced videos later on where we show how to deal with proper UDIMs and good conventions for proper 3D painting. This is just to get started with it. Yeah, because ideally when you think about it, it, the hard parts are where things are really close together and have complex curves, like the ear. Yeah. <laughs> and you even something like the inside of the nose, like the nostrils, that's yeah. tricky. Yeah. Inside of the eyes. Let's call it the eye bag then. The eye bag. <laughs> <laughs> so the eye bag as well. That would be hard to cram that information in there. Yeah. So there are cuts that would be helpful to have, but not yeah. necessary. So I'm just going to cut off the ears as well. Man, who made that apology around the ears? Man, that's a really, that's a really good model. <laughs> not frustrating at all to you, Matt. Yeah, I yeah. wonder who was the artist here, Morton. Yeah, she probably made a loop there. <laughs> <laughs> This oh, message was made a long time ago. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so so now uh, we just selected all these guys here, and um, we also probably need a cut. Uh, we probably need a cut from the back here as well, and also where these cuts are. This is going to become intuitive later on. If this doesn't feel intuitive right now, it's fine. Don't worry too much about it. Yeah, you can see Henning really struggling with it. So <laughs> it's uh, no, it's it's. <laughs> Sometimes the cuts make sense, and it's also it yeah. also really depends on the the structure of the head. Yeah. Like sometimes you want to cut in the back of the neck, sometimes you don't. I yeah. mean, it's it's very dependent on the mesh. Yeah. So now we have all our cuts here. Now this is where the magic really happens, because as you can tell, nothing has really happened. So if you were to just like uh, it, right now, it's actually going a bit slow because the symmetry is on. Uh, so just first disable symmetry again. So go uh, W symmetry and disable symmetry. So if we were to just like move this kind of stuff out now, double click it to select the entire thing. Yeah, we can move it, but we aren't really any closer to it. So what we need to do now is we need to do what's called unfolding. So we do this by going to UV, to right click, go to UV, and just select all of them, and shift right mouse button, and you have this little guy here called unfold. And we're not gonna worry about any of the settings here, we're just gonna do unfold, and now you're gonna see what happens. Boom. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> so now this has now been unfolded. Let's just move these guys out. I remember in 3ds Max, like when they introduced pelt mapping. Oh, that was that amazing. was one of the things where we're like, oh yeah, okay, maybe it makes sense now. But I, I, I didn't do UVs for the first three to f three three no. years. No, took was, a long time to understand that. Like I was scared of UVs. Yeah, that was silly. So now you can see what's actually happening. The difference now is that now you can see that we have we have data everywhere. This is the UV tools in Maya are actually pretty damn solid. They yeah. used to be, how do you say this, atrocious and not usable in any way. That's where a lot of people use something like Modo, UV layout, or just general UV tools. But today, I, I do all my UV mapping straight in Maya. I used to, I actually used to take it into ZBrush to mm. uh, like UV master stuff on yeah. everything. And this just, it's an annoying workflow. Yeah, because this just kind of works. Yeah. So obviously now, if you were to export this out, if you export out a single texture map is this square right here. So from here to here, this is what's called a UDIM. We will get more into this later on in future videos. But essentially, you want everything to be packed into a square. So we have some packing tools as well. But before we do that, we're just going to look at another feature here called Optimize. Because right now, it's it's we, we've we laid this out. Or we've been unfolding this once now. But we can there might be some issues in it. So we can just go right Shift, right mouse button, and Optimize. And now you can just see that everything just kind of gets a bit optimized. Everything just gets a bit more even here. So that's quite useful. You can also go to the settings here and just set the amount of iterations here. Uh, also make sure that your unfold 3D plugin is loaded and it, the method is set to unfold 3D. The legacy one you don't want to use because that's terrible. So I think if you are in an earlier version of Maya, I think the optimize was called relax, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it might be. Um, in case you aren't in 2018. Yeah. 
So you can also you can just go here and set multiple iterations. Ah, relax, yeah. Yeah, I usually just hit the G key. <laughs> to do the end. You can also do the same thing under unfold. You have options here as well. But setting this to one, this is you do often have to do this more than one. So you can set this yeah. to ten. So I usually my default settings are like between five and ten for the unfold yeah. and maybe fifty to a hundred sometimes in the optimized, yeah. depending on the mesh that I'm working with. Yeah. So you can see this now takes a bit longer, but it, it it's just it's just a bit more resolved now. So Let's just take uh, all of these guys now, and we want to pack them nicely into this little square. We have the layout tools, and you can see here we have layout UVs. Let's just see what happens then. This is just essentially moves in everything into center. You can do this with the unfold option automatically. Yes. So when you unfold, it also packs them. Sometimes you want this, most of the time you don't. You see the pack option here. So if you enable this, let's just do this. Uh, I don't like to have this enabled. No, me neither. Because so actually, <laughs> oh, it actually looks really good. That's very uh, symmetrical. Right? So this is super nice <laughs> symmetrical. I just don't like it because I don't control it perfectly. The problem with packing is that even if you select one part of your mesh, I think it packs everything yeah. connected to that mesh. Yeah. So I prefer to do this in separate operations here. So let's say this is out here and it's a bit crazy. We can now just go to layout and you can do layout UVs or you can do layout along U or layout along V as well. So that clearly didn't work that well. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> but a good starting point is for sure just going under layout, uh, sorry, unfold, and just enable the pack. Yeah. But this is a good starting point. I prefer to arrange this uh, just by myself. Yeah. And also because once you start arranging it, you know, your, your texture artist or whatever you, whoever you answer to, uh, might have specific needs for, for your layout. Yeah. So an automatic layout is not always the best thing. No. But I mean, that's that's essentially it for UV mapping. Like, this is a big, big topic which you can go into for days and all that. Mm. And the tools here, like if you see all the menus and all this kind of <laughs> crazy stuff here, it's crazy. Like, there are so many tools here. But essentially, I use a few hotkeys whenever I'm doing any kind of UV mapping. This is, the, what we just showed you here is, the exact same way I do this for when we do this for movies. This is ninety percent of ninety percent of it. Yeah, it's, it's like you know when we we sculpt in the super, you use like two brushes. So, it, <laughs> yeah. so just to like sum this up, you open the UV, UV editor by going to UV UV editor, uh, you select stuff here by going just selecting edges. You can do cut, and that will just cut it. You can double click on something and then just move it around. You can use uh, you can go to UV shell to move the entire shell around, but instead of double clicking. You can use some um, uh, so to uh, bring stuff back together again. If you want to do this, you can do so, or you can use stitch together. And there are tons of options for all these guys as well. But essentially, these are the options we use. So once you have something like this, you you can export this out to to Photoshop, and you can start painting on your on your texture here. Uh, we will definitely, like we said, go more fur further in depth than this. So if you if you see that there are like UV conventions missing from this video, <laughs> we will cover this in the future, such as UDIMS, uh, how to do a body, how to bring this into different software, etc., etc. This is just to give you a very basic understanding of what UV mapping is. So I hope this has been a really useful video. So if you want to see more content like this in the future, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you.